Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer for Monday the 10th of May. As always, we begin with our service of light, so I will light our candle. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. And we are going to sing our hymn throughout the service today, Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery, number 179, uh, words written by Marty Hagen. And uh, we'll sing the first two verses now. Tree of life and awesome mystery, in your death we are reborn. Though you die in all of history, still you rise with every morn. Still you rise with every morn. Seed that dies to rise in glory, may we see ourselves in you. If we learn to live your story, may we die to rise anew. May we die to rise anew. And our psalm today is a portion of Psalm 77, which we say together. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flash on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And now we will sing the next two verses of our hymn. We remember truth once spoken, love passed on through act and word. Every person lost and broken, where's the body of our Lord? Where's the body of our Lord? Gentle Jesus, mighty Spirit, come and flame our hearts anew. May we all your joy inherit if we bear the cross with you. If we bear the cross with you. Our Gospel is Luke 9, 18 to 27, the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to St. Luke, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Once when Jesus was praying alone with only the disciples near him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others that one of the ancient prophets has arisen. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, the Messiah of God. He sternly ordered and commanded them not to tell anyone, saying, The Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to them all, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. But what does it profit them if they gain the whole world, but lose or forfeit themselves? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But truly I tell you, 
There are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. The gospel of Christ, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this is coming on after a heady time of success and amazing growing fame for Jesus. Everyone is amazed and uh, Jesus is praying by himself, but the disciples are near. As Jesus often does, he goes to a quiet place to pray. And when he asks his disciples, who does everyone say I am? They say, you know, either Moses or one of the prophets or John the Baptist raised from the dead. And when Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? And Peter, of course, uh, he speaks without even thinking. And yet often great truth comes out of his mouth. Um, Jesus says, you're the Messiah. Now, his disciples, especially Peter, think he's the Messiah because of this wonderful success uh, that they've had. But his thinking and the thinking of the Jewish people is that the Messiah would be this wonderful warrior who would rid uh, them of their oppressor, right now the Romans. And Jesus immediately, when he talks about Messiah, changes everything, you know, puts everything on its head. And he says that the Son of Man himself will have to undergo great suffering and die and be killed, you know, and on the third day rise again. So this is a very different message than what they're expecting when Peter says, you're the Messiah. Jesus knows that the Messiahship of the world, of what the world expects, is about greater fame and glory and everything, and victory and power. Jesus knows that the true road is one of self-sacrifice, giving up oneself, even to the death, that we might rise again. And Jesus asks us to follow him. So the ways of the world today are about gaining for yourself, gaining for your family, gaining for your tribe, power and glory. That's not the way of Jesus. It's very countercultural. And Jesus asks us to also pick up our own cross, to follow in his way, a way of self-sacrifice, self-giving. It isn't a way without joy. It's a way with great joy in knowing that you are giving of yourself, you are fulfilling your purpose in this world. And there are some who will not die without seeing the kingdom. If you are engaged in this work, you will see the kingdom today in your everyday life as you see glimpses of it every day. Let us sing the next verse of our hymn. Christ, you lead and we shall follow, stumbling though our steps may be. One with you in joy and sorrow, we the river, you the sea. We the river, you the sea. And now let us say together the words of the hero Israel. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. And in our prayers today, when I say Lord in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. We pray, O God, that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may depart this life in your faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of St. Luke and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in our prayers today, of course, we continue to pray for the sick. We pray for those sick known to us, those unknown to us, those in our parish. We pray for those who are struggling because of the pandemic, whether through illness or through economic hardship or any other cause, those who are 
ill at ease at this time. We also pray for those who are doing everything they can to bring about the end of this pandemic. Bless their work, bless their hands, bless their souls. Give them the strength they need to continue day to day. And may they have the great admiration and thanks of the people whom they are saving uh, from this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our cycle of prayer for the sick in the parish, we pray especially for Jane Ross, for Len, Jane Gottke, Jeff Smith, Bernice Peterson, and Brandon Waller. We pray for their friends and family who are supporting them, the medical community that are treating them. We pray for all the means used for their recovery and for them and for ourselves and all the sick. We pray for the healing hand of Jesus to touch us and bring us wholeness of being in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our refugee family, for Karima, Muhammad, Fatin, and Ahmed. Keep them safe, O oh Lord. Keep them together. Keep them healthy. And keep them growing in hope for the day they will come to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for 10 more households in our parish list. And if you're joining us from another parish, I invite you to pray for members of your community. Today, we pray for Aideen Slater, Janice Slonwhite, Anne Sleeman Day, Betty Smith, Cam Smith, Colin and Marion Smith, Thomas and Kimberly Smith, Veronica and Ken Smith, Martha Smith, and Rick and Laurie Sauter. We give thanks for each one, O oh Lord. We pray for their health and well-being and safety. And we pray that they might be protected from the pandemic. We pray that they might know they belong to a community of faith which cares and prays for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the Anglican cycle of prayer, today we pray for the Diocese of Bunbury in the Anglican Church of Australia. We pray for their bishop and all the clergy and people of that diocese. Give them health and strength and encouragement in knowing that the world is praying for them today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for another brother of the Society, St. John the Evangelist. Today we pray for Brother Luke Deitwig. We give you thanks for his keenness, his many gifts, his artistic ability, which he shares, and the ways that he leads people to a deeper spirituality. We pray for him and his words of wisdom and all that he does in ministry. Keep him safe and help him to rejoice in knowing that there is a community of people praying for him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray our night prayer from the Anglican Church of New Zealand. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. And our collect for this week. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing the last verse of our hymn. God of all our fear and sorrow, God who lives beyond our death, hold us close through each tomorrow, love as near as every breath, love as near as every breath. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. May the Lord of peace give us peace in all ways and at all times. Amen. Thank you for joining us in Evening Prayer tonight. I hope you join us every evening and I hope you have a wonderful night's rest and all God's blessings to you.